Santa Claus. Everyone knows him and everyone loves him and no one loves me. But that's okay because everyone in the world recognizes him or at least has their own version of him. But that being said, most people really don't know that much about him aside from the classic hat, beard and exploitation of cheap labor. And no one can explain how he runs his whole operation. Now, spoilers for life ahead, but the notion of Santa Claus is actually an incredibly effective method of brainwashing children used by conglomerates to turn the whole month of December into a marketable commodity. So in other words, he doesn't exist, we made him up for money. So I did some research and tried to prove if a Santa Claus could theoretically exist. And fair warning, it changed my life and it will change yours too. No exceptions. Now the criteria for proving that Santa could exist relies on three main points. Can he make enough toys for all the world's children in a year? How does his sleigh actually fly and could his reindeer actually pull it? And can he go around the whole world in just one night? If all these three criteria points are proven, then there can objectively be a Santa Claus and no one can say otherwise and vice versa. So can he make enough toys in a year? To find that out, first we have to find out the amount of children in the whole world, which Google says there are 2.2 billion of as of 2020. But I'm taking off that point too because I never learned how to do decimals and to account for error since some good kids like me always get missed around Christmas. So there's actually only 2 billion. But unfortunately, Santa doesn't visit the poor, which Google says there are 1 billion of. So that's a sad thing to think about but a lucky break for our big guy. So using the power of math, that brings us to 1 billion children. But wait, Santa's whole shtick is giving presents to the good kids and cold to the bad ones. But this leaves us with a bit of a moral quandary because I don't think single acts can objectively make you good or bad. So it must come down to genetics. So after giving up on researching if there was a specific gene for good and bad, I just gave up and used one of those career tests that employers use to weed out the delinquents from the goody two-shoes. So this one and this one are giving off some corrupt dictator vibes. This one has a sword which equals violence which, equal, which is naughty. This one looks like a know-it-all and if they are, they've definitely made their case that Santa doesn't exist so he has every right to have a personal vendetta against them. And this guy has a gun which equals violence which is naughty. And while Umbrella Guy didn't really do anything classified as naughty, I don't particularly trust that cape. So he has to unfortunately be deleted from happiness on Christmas morning. Which leaves us with 10 of the 16 possible acceptable variants of human in Santa's eyes. Or about 625 million children to deliver presents to. Now this is all well and good, except for the fact that these need to be manufactured in time. So assuming everyone wants a PS5 this year because they're cool spending a K to play Cyberpunk and using reports from Sony which say they made 5 million PS5s in 4 months, this means that Santa will be a stunning 615 million PS5 short if he was given a year to make them all. But wait, PlayStation has only 5,000 employees working their regular 9 to 5 jobs, but Santa has 110,000 elves slaving away 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. So by using the power of math, Santa's elves would be able to make to work 3 times longer and there are 22 times as many of them. So in a year, they would be able to build 990 million PS5s. That's over one and a half times more than they actually need. So we can confirm that Santa can indeed make enough toys for all the good children in the world who aren't poor. Chapter two, is flight possible? And if so, how is it possible? Now, Santa is already a pretty fly guy, but there's also one more mystery about him to unveil. How does he actually get his sleigh to fly through the air? Well, it's no surprise that most of the heavy lifting is done by his nine reindeer. The real question is as to how they are levitating. And explaining this is easier said than done, which is a good thing because I only have to say it and don't actually have to make reindeer levitate. 
But before we can talk about that, it's time to turn our undivided attention to the Tinkerbell Cinematic Universe and the six different Tinkerbell movies, one of which has a 100% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, so you know it's the pinnacle of cinema. But let's not get bogged down by the fact that critics are all hacks and garbage at their jobs, and let's instead talk about Tinkerbell. In the Tinkerbell movies, Tinkerbell is seen having to use fairy dust to allow her to fly, which is stupid because she already has disproportionately massive wings. Since Tinkerbell is about 15 centimeters tall, we can use these measurements to estimate the volume of the sack holding the fairy dust. This is because the average person's arm span is about the same as their height, so the average person who doesn't spend this long analyzing Tinkerbell can actually get some stuff done. Anyway, by using the power of math to find out how many sacks would fit into her arm, and how many arms would fit into her whole person, I ended up with the sack being 1.1 centimeters at its widest point with a height of about 1.4 and a side length of about 1.9 centimeters. So to find the volume it would be easier to think of it as a cone and a half of a sphere if the cone had a height of about 1.1 centimeters. So the volume of the sack is about 4.2 cubic centimeters and since Tinkerbell is a 112 scale humanoid with an upscaled weight of 44 kilos we can calculate her mass as around 300 grams by dividing 44 by 144 instead of 12 since 3D objects have an extra dimension. So what we get from this is that it would take 14 cubic centimeters of fairy dust to lift 1 kilo of mass, which is the same as 14 grams of fairy dust for 1000 grams of mass. Now I bet you're all wondering what this has to do with Santa. And for that, we're going to have to pretend fairy dust exists in real life and can be used by Santa. So all he would have to do to fly is cover himself and his sleigh and the reindeer in fairy dust and hope for the best. But the real question is, would it work? Santa weighs about 260 pounds or 117 kilos. And the mean weight of a reindeer is 135 kilos. So for the nine reindeer plus Santa, that would be 1,467 kilos in total. But apparently the sleigh weighs 60,000 tons, so the total weight comes down to this number, which I don't know how to read. And here's where it gets delicious. A human can eat about 2.3 kilos if they're on the larger side, which Santa is. And if we assume our reindeer are hungry boys that eat 8 kilos of food each, then the total amount of food these absolute legends can stomach is about 82.3 kilos. So we need to force feed these inspiring athletes 82 kilos of fairy dust whether they like it or not. So by using our previous calculation for fairy dust, it turns out this only lifts 6 tons, which is about 10,000 times less than it needs. So it seems I've really shot myself in the foot at proving this theory and there really can be no Santa. But wait, these are not regular boys. These are boys of focus, commitment, and sheer will. These are true athletes who will stop at nothing to make sure every child has a present under their tree. <laughs> these are boys who will risk life and live in the good name of Christmas. So hear me out. They take the fairy dust intravenously. Now, in my go for broke last ditch attempt scenario, let's just say we were able to inject their entire body mass with fairy dust and transfuse out all their blood, which is completely possible if you suspend your disbelief enough to pretend it is. Anyway, this leaves us with a grand total of 1,549 kilos of fairy dust since, since they can still eat the 82 kilos. So their combined masses would be able to lift 110,642 kilos, which isn't enough. But remember that the 60,000 tons is the weight of all the presents, so I'm sure they would be able to make pit stops at the North Pole every now and again. This method will, would allow our chunky boys to not only save Christmas, but to also die heroes immortalized in our collective spirits for their noble sacrifice so we can all play cyberpunk which is really the true meaning of Christmas. 
<laughs> so we can put that one in the books as confirmed. And we've got two out of the three of the criteria. But now that they can fly, will they make it in time? So this one actually seems pretty straightforward because it's very easy to prove wrong because it doesn't physiologically make sense. There is statistically 12 numbers on a clock and 2 billion children to visit and it's pretty obvious one of those numbers is bigger than the other. Now I know what you're thinking. You did all of this math saying there was only 1 billion gifts but now you're saying there's 2 billion children. And you'd be right. Except that Santa still has to deliver coal to the, all the useless remaining kids. So he would have to make 2 billion deliveries. Now, I still know what you're thinking. 2 billion deliveries in one night? That's crazy, because I know for a fact that it takes slightly longer than that to go around the whole wide world. But consider this. The Earth is a three-dimensional object, which is two more dimensions than you have which means it rotates about its axis and gives Santa and the reindeer 24 hours to complete their journey. So that begs the question, how far would Santa have to travel? To figure this out, we need to know the radius and circumference of the Earth, which Google says are these measurements. Then we need to know how far apart houses are. Google says that they are 30 feet or about 9.1 meters from the front, which is how far apart your neighbor across the street would be. Now here's where it gets complicated, but there's no need to worry Avril Lavigne, because using the radius of the Earth, we can figure out what angle from the vertical Santa would have to travel to do a flyby of your neighbor's house, if your house was sitting on the vertical 9.1 meters from your neighbor's. This works out to be the number in green. So if you divide 360 by it, because there are 360 degrees in a circle, Santa would have to make this many trips and multiplied by the circumference of the earth he would have to travel this many kilometers at this speed which is actually 6.8 times the speed of light. <laughs> so here we run into a bit of a dilemma because this science guy here made the speed limit of the universe the speed of light which means objects with mass can't go faster than it. And let's face it, Santa isn't exactly the epitome of health. So it looks like Christmas isn't coming this year. But when the going gets rough, I think our boys need a pep talk. Santa, Rudolph and the other eight reindeer that no one cares about, we care about you. And we care about Christmas. We love the thrill of waking up on Christmas morning, running to the, to the tree to open up our presents, and reveling in the joy of being able to play cyberpunk on our PS5s. And not to put any extra pressure on you, but the significance of your existence relies not in the belief that you reward those that are good, but on the illusion of receiving gifts, which if in the event that you fail to reinforce that illusion by being unable to deliver the gifts, would cause children to completely discount your well-meaning well yet superfluous ideologies about being morally good in favour of global anarchy. <coughs> Do you see that? That earth is on fire. Fire is hot. And if I remember correctly, you live in what some may call the world's largest collection of icebergs. So with the rise of anarchy will come the fall of the glaciers, and when the tides turn, it'll be you and you alone drowning in your own failure. Anyway, I think that went well, and our boys are now motivated enough to break the speed limits of the universe. And this also objectively confirms that with enough peer pressure, anything is possible. And that's another myth confirmed, so you can look forward to Christmas this year, because it can be objectively proven that Santa exists. <laughs>